doing some scenario planning now. And absolutely, we have a fiduciary responsibility to our shareholders and our boards to do exactly that. Gentleman's time has expired. Mr. Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, back when I was younger, I used to coach like ninth grade football and, or ninth grade basketball, seventh and eighth grade. And there's a stunning dynamic when you, when, when you get into coaching and you're coaching kids. You could be a coach and you see a coach, and they could be the most objective person in the world in analyzing their players and their talent. Then their kid is on the team, and they lose all objectivity, right? They think their kid's a little better than they probably are, so their kid starts and all of this other stuff. We all know that happens in the midst of Little League season. And I feel like my friends on the other side uh, and it's just stunning to, to watch this hearing um, completely have a blind spot when it comes to government spending for the military. Now, I represent Akron, Ohio, so I have Lockheed facilities. We have lots of defense. We've got a lot of Tier 2, Tier 3. I get it. This is government spending and it's creating jobs. And the scenario that we're talking about right now is that a cut in government spending is going to cost jobs. And that's why we're here. And we don't want to see that happen. And to have my colleague from South Carolina talk about, you know, the, the jobs in Virginia that are going to be lost or the warn notices. The warn notice was put into law by an Ohio senator, Senator Metzenbaum, because of factories being closed down in the 1980s. So we know that, you know, what, what could potentially happen here in, our, in my district and in our state. And I just find it stunning that we can sit here and have a conversation about job loss and, uh, because of these reductions, but turn around in the same breath and say that the stimulus package had absolutely no effect, didn't save any jobs, when the numbers and every economist basically will tell us otherwise. We need your help because there is a narrative in this country right now that every dollar that the government spends is a waste of money, should be privatized, outsourced, done by the private sector, so on and so forth. Transportation, education. And I just, and I'm not here to lecture anybody, but I just find it stunning because I'm in the budget committee too, and I have to listen to, you know, I just try to imagine if you were energy companies, if you were alternative energy companies, if you were a solar panel company, if you were a, a windmill company and there was government funding saying we need to reduce our dependency on foreign oil so we want to contract with energy companies and put up windmills so we can reduce our dependency and get out of all these entanglements in the, all over the world, you guys would be crucified right now. Crucified. And I'm with you. I think this is a bad idea. I think it, I like the chainsaw with, you know, for a cosmetic surgery analogy. That's, this is terrible what's going to happen, and it's stupid. But we need your help to say, hey, all government funding isn't bad. You can't just be concerned with your one little slice of the pie because you're, you're getting bombarded by a narrative, quite frankly, that's been created by the other side, and we all got to deal with this problem, I get it, but it's overwhelming, and now you're, we're all swimming upstream trying to say, well, wait a minute, this funding is very necessary because it's got all these jobs and here's the tier two and tier two, three uh, supply chain that's going to be affected by this. And if, and if a guy like me from Youngstown, Ohio comes out and says, well, maybe we need some government funding for security in our neighborhoods and we need to fund the COPS program or we need to fund fire grants, you'd be crucified. I'm a liberal tree hugger. Government doesn't have a responsibility to do that stuff. Security is security. And it's just important for us, we've got to get past this, because this is ridiculous. This is the end result of 20 or 30 years of bashing the government, and here we are. Sequestration, it's all coming right to a head right now. So I just want to ask one question, all of you, if you can quickly give me an answer. One of you can speak for the group, because the time is short. We are going to have to go out and borrow money to make sure that this sequestration doesn't go online. We've got to borrow it. So. I don't want to go online, and I don't think it's a good idea. Help me make the argument to my constituents that it is okay for us to go out and borrow money to make sure that these cuts don't happen. Can you, can you help me make that argument, why it's valuable at this point in a deep financial 
crisis that we're in, why it's important for us to go out and maybe borrow at this time until the economy recovers. Can any of you help me make that argument in, in Ohio? Gentleman's time has expired.